What's a happening YouTube? Wadox Studios here. Um, hope you've had a happy holidays. Uh, just a quick update. I wanted to touch on the 5.7 DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 SM5 Lumen fix. Um, want to shout out to Matt Walker. I appreciate you getting in touch with me. And there's also been some comments here for a couple of edge cases that people have ran into with landscape and hair. Um, so yeah, this was brought to my attention. Uh, a fix has gone in. So if we go and look at the commits, you'll see that um, I fixed the uh, the lighting and non-G buffer material sources, um, which could have resulted in a crash or an artifacting. Um, and again, big shout out to one of the Discord members that actually we've known each other quite some time, but he jumped into Discord to let me know that... Um, you know, he, he found a way around this uh, edge case and this crash. So that is in the branch. Um, also, during the time I recorded this video, uh, that custom branch was on 5.7.0, and you'll see that the branch has been caught up to release. So we're a few commits ahead of release. Um, and this is bittersweet information that I am going to have to tell you guys because I've been kind of keeping up with the SM5 DirectX 11 software ray trace lumen support since I think 5.5 after, you know, it stopped functioning. I did a custom branch for that. Um, I put pressure to have a CVAR put in so that it could officially come back for 5.6. And then now I've been kind of supporting the fact that uh, it looks like on 5.7, it's been basically on the way out. Now, I have a PR open against main. I had mentioned that in the previous video, um, but I've been keeping up with the changes that are happening in main. And uh, the PR I had against 5.7 dev was rejected. And they said that they had, basically they were in the middle of a, a, a refactor, which I should have known if that's the work they were doing in 5.7 dev, that the likelihood is, is that main would be going into a separate direction. So, um, this is my old system, my fix, which is a fallback that uses uh, encoded reprojection vector texture. Um, the new system, which Epic refactored, is using uh, encoded history scene coordinate texture, which is a different type of keeping up with uh, velocity and motion vectors. It's basically sampling the direct scene coordinates. Um, it also has moved away from this history position, screen position, minus velocity uh, function that they were using. And they have this pre-computed uh, decode and use method uh, that they're going to be using going forward. Um, it looks like also there's no longer a need for the history screen position scale bias function. Again, the fallback path used that. Uh, it's fully removed. So what this likely means is that Vulcan SM5 Lumen is going to eventually go bye-bye as well. Um, and maybe that's prepping for the luminous caching method that they've been speaking about. That's supposed to be a little lighter, but at least right now, as I'm watching main, um, there's simply no fallback. It's just either you're an SM6 running Lumen, software ray trace Lumen, or you're not. Um, are you using hardware ray trace lumen period and uh, using it in collaboration with with mega lights uh, so um, that means a, a bunch of different things right it means uh, you're likely going to be running vsms you're going to have a little bit of a heavier pass um, you know the the lower end and the mid-range hardware is going to be kind of stuck in this limbo land of like not being able to make the move forward if they want gi um because all of the gi methods even in the rtx gi branch are all starting to fall on ray traced you know lumen um which is different than rtx gi and ddgi in the sense that it's not really hardware accelerated um in other engines and other workflows if you used ray trace hardware and rt cores what you'll notice is that you you accelerate the ray tracing um and uh if they're making use of a software ddgi path or something along those lines uh having full-fledged ray trace dedicated hardware usually results in 
a speed up of using any type of ray trace lighting. Um, that is not the case in, or has not been the case historically when it came to software ray trace lumen versus hardware. If you enabled the hardware ray tracing, it, it hurt. It actually like eight more milliseconds per frame and cost more um, at the trade-off that you got higher quality. So um, I guess here's to hoping that there's gonna be a middle ground or a middle layer where you can choose to reduce the ray trace quality down to something closer to what software ray trace lumen provided um are they finish out the so the new software ray trace lumen path um which will give mid and low range hardware a path to take um but the reality is is let's face it we're all all GPUs are coming with some form of RT core support, at least the newer ones are. Um, and we just need that. We need options to be able to let that path happen if it's going to lean on RT cores for ray tracing. And we need that path to be suitable for mid to lower range cards that have RT cores. Um, you know, this, this world of, uh, upscaling and being stuck at like PlayStation 2 resolutions just to enable dynamic GI or, you know, dynamic global illumination, um, especially in an engine that is having a pretty hard time falling back on baked lighting in its current state. Um, you really don't have a much of a choice. It's, it's deal with instabilities in UE5 land on lower to mid-range hardware or go back to Unreal Engine 4 and use the LOD and baked lighting path line, uh, pipeline for lower in the medium range hardware or, you know, try to squeeze blood from a stone and, and follow the new Nanite and VSM and the new Lumen lighting mechanisms in, in UE5 or do like Embark has done, which is dedicate a lot of resources to stripping the engine back and taking the physics and DDGI approach. So sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it appears that, you know, at least for a little while longer, this is kind of where we are. Um, anyway, um, for those of you if, that I don't talk to between now and then, I just want to say happy new year. If you haven't already, uh, consider joining the Wild Ox Studios family. Check the links out in the description. I have an updated link to the GitHub. Um, we have a ton of devs and artists and designers um, spanning across Unreal Engine to Godot to Unity to Flax uh, in the Wild Ox Studios Discord. And we would love to have you if you're on a development journey yourself and uh, just wanting to share expertise or like reach out and ask questions. Until next time, happy developing. And toodles, guys.